So welcome to the Center City Residents Association Zoning Committee. The CCRA is a 75 year old nonprofit civic association. As a nonprofit, we, excuse me, I'm sorry, I had a technical glitch. Let's try that one more time. As a nonprofit, we encourage everyone to become a member, which can easily be done through our website. There are several benefits to being a member, one of which is being notified of all proposed zoning changes within our area. The CCRA is a, rec is a recognized registered community organization, RCO, for our area. It is the RCO for our area. Our boundaries are from South Street to JFK Boulevard and Broad Street to the Schuylkill River. Our committee works as follows. First, applicants are to present. We ask applicants address the specific refusals or referrals. And we ask for no interruptions as applicants give their full presentation. After the presentation, the zoning committee will have a chance to ask questions. And after the zoning committee's questions are completed, we will open the meeting to the committee, excuse me, the community. When addressed, we ask that you state your name and address. We ask that you keep your questions succinct and to the variance or refusal, that is to the zoning issue being discussed. We also ask that you not repeat others' questions. If you agree with someone's position or have the same question, you are welcome to simply state so. If there's a spokesperson for the neighbors, we will ask that this person speak for the group first. After we hear from all the applicants and listen to all the community comments, our committee meets in closed session. We vote in one of three ways, oppose, not oppose, or not oppose with provisos. The CCRA never votes in favor of any application. And our decision is emailed to the council person, the ZBA, and the applicant, and it's also posted on the CCRA website. Importantly, no matter how we decide, if you are concerned about a project, we strongly recommend that you attend the ZBA hearing. That is the best way to, for you to make your concerns known. The CCRA Zoning Committee cannot express the neighbor's point of view. Only a property owner or an aggrieved individual may express their personal concerns to the ZBA. And with that said, we have four uh, properties on our agenda for this evening. And uh, those properties are, and this is the order in which we will uh, hear the properties, 1604 Spruce Street, 1721 Lombard Street, 504 to 510 South 21st Street, and 1528 Now Dane Street. So we're going to begin with 1604 Spruce Street. This is an application for a visitor accommodation in the same building with all other uses previously approved. The reason for the refusal is the proposed visitor accommodations is prohibited in this zoning district. Now, I believe that the uh, presenting uh, individual is Mr. Aleg. Um, and let me ask if he is present and let me turn this over to him. Yes, Aleg Sokolov, thank I, you. I am here, <clears throat> excuse thank me. You. Veronica, I have to say that is the best pronunciation of my actual Eastern European, the Eastern European way to say my name that I've ever heard. So, well, that's wonderful. I share the the ancestry. I so let appreciate me, that. Let me turn it over to you. Glad I got that right. You should be able to share your screen, and I invite you to present your case. Wonderful. Thank you so so much. Firstly, thank you, everyone. Good evening. Um, as as Veronica said, my name is Oleg Sokolov. I am the attorney representing. The company that currently owns 1604 Spruce, which is called 1604 Spruce Multi LLC, um, the owners, who are a husband and wife, Mr. Stephen and Beth Wheeler, are on the line. And after I give my little intro spiel, I will have them quickly just say hello and, and let you guys know um, a little bit about them. But as Veronica stated, this is a use refusal that was generated for... Um, a visitor accommodation permit as my clients would like to use this property, or I should say continue to use this property as, as an Airbnb. Uh, as many of you are aware, the, the city has recently enacted some new regulations regarding how Airbnbs can be run and in which zoning districts. Um, 
this is a request just and i'm happy to answer some questions at the end but if if anyone here on the call is not aware basically there are two diff different designations one would allow you to use a property that you live in for a period of six months out of the year for short-term stays and the other category the one that we're seeking here would allow uh, a property which is not by right to allow visitor accommodations to use it as a short-term stay or Airbnb for the entirety of the year. Um, so with that, I will just share my screen, please, and take you few, through a few things and some pictures of the property. Uh, actually, bef before I do that, so just so, so everyone knows, 1604 Spruce um, is a five-unit property. And this is a request to use only one of the units for visitor accommodations. The remaining four units are annual uh, leases, and my clients have no intention of changing that. This first floor unit that I'll show you is, is the property that we intend to use as, or would like your permission to use as an Airbnb. So before I go ahead and jump into any kind of exhibits. Um, Steve, Beth, I didn't see you guys on the line, but can you just uh, unmute yourselves and say hello and introduce yourselves a little bit? And Hello, Oleg, Steve's here, I'm here, I'm Beth. And uh, yes, we are the owners at 1604 Spruce, Spruce in 1721 Lombard. And Beth, do you wanna just tell, tell the community here what it is um, you do for work since it's obviously relevant to this, to this Airbnb and well, I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor in Bucks County. If we live in Bucks County, we had uh, purchased the property at Lombard uh, when our daughter was in college. And uh, our daughter was here and uh, our son stays here. Sometimes we use it for Steve and I to be down in the city. So it's a family use for us downstairs. And uh, upstairs, we decided to, to try the Airbnb. I, my nephew did, when we bought the property, there was a tenant upstairs and um, it's a duplex and there was a renter's license, but we, uh, when the tenant left, we ran it to our nephew. He was here as a young man. He was, a, it was great. And then we thought when he had left that perhaps we would try Airbnb. And so, we've been- Beth, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So we're talking about uh, Spruce here. So that's not uh, the two unit, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No First, we, yes, we, we purchased that property after we purchased Lombard and- uh, About 10 years ago. Yeah, about 10 years ago. And it's about five years ago, we decided that uh, the one unit became vacant and we thought, well, it'd be a super Airbnb. It's close to the Kimmel Center and some, uh, you know, it's a great area. And so we started to do that and we get a lot of actors and um, actresses. We get medical people. We get a lot of professional people. It's, we don't do, that's short. We only do two week minimum at that uh, property. So I typically, like right now, we, we just had the producer from Les Miserables was there for two weeks. And uh, so it's nice. We don't have any, uh, you know, real short term. It's just professional coming in for this reason or that reason. And, uh, you know, we just had the whole Phillies thing happen in, in the city, but we don't get any, any fans or anything like that. We don't, that's not our business model. Our business model is longer term, professional, and that's that's what we've been doing. And and just I won't um, make Beth talk about it, but Beth takes care of the property herself. There isn't any kind of like third party manager that that manages it. So you know it, it's certainly looked after by the specific owners and and more than just a, a business endeavor to the wheeler. So with that, I will share my screen and jump into a few things here. All right. Is everybody able to see that? We are. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Let me just expand here so that I can get. All right. So, so as Veronica, and then um, I reiterated a little bit here, here is the property 1604 Spruce. And you'll see that it's just the generation of a one use refusal, which is prohibiting visitor accommodations in this um CMX2 zoning district. Here's just a, a copy of, of the notice letter that went out to the community. Um, we've certainly sent in our proof of mailings to everyone. And 
truthfully, I, you know, we know that generally CCRA has a, a a lot of items that are requested of applicants. However, in this scenario, it's just not something that is available to us. You know, we, we didn't have any plans. We're not doing any kind of construction. What we're trying to do is just get the correct licensure for a use that we previously used it as and now has been restricted by some new uh, zoning regulations. Um, the wheelers have, if I can just move this, have also gone around to all of the, or as many of the um, the neighbors of the property mm -hmm. and have managed to obtain a number of letters of support for this out of nearby neighbors. This one is for the, uh, pardon me, the, the next application. They were just all grouped together, but we have three here for the 1604 Spruce. And then what I will click quickly run you through. So this is a, an external view of the property. It's this one here with the green door and the two windows and the window sills. As you'll see, it's a four story property containing five units. The unit that we're seeking permission to use as a visitor accommodation, Airbnb, short term stay, whatever terminology you wanna use at this point would be this front facing spruce unit. Uh, you know, just to, to give you a sense of what this unit actually looks like inside. I, I hope everyone will agree with me that, you know, it, it's quite well kept and, and it is a beautiful unit. So And this is a, a bi-level unit that goes into the second floor a little bit. It's certainly, you know, um, as many of you probably know this area, Spruce, it's it's somewhat, a, I would say, a, a bit more of a commercial area of Spruce that has a few restaurants and the convenience store and certainly the parking lot um, and a few bars, you know, within within walking proximity. So it's it's certainly a desirable neighborhood for, for any kind of use, but... Uh, for people really trying to get a sense of Philadelphia when they're here for a limited amount of time, it's a, it's a wonderful place to stay and feel like a resident. And perhaps, you know, we'll even attract some of the people that stay here as an Airbnb to eventually become residents of Philadelphia. So with that, I, I do apologize that there is not more to share, but, you know, this is simply a, a use um, change variance request. So we, we don't really have much. There's no construction being done. Um, and, you know, as Beth stated, they generally rent to, to, uh, professionals, people coming into town for, for things like shows as she discussed. So it's certainly, as you can see, not set up to be, uh, one of these, you know, Airbnb party pads that people have so many concerns about and understandably, of course. So I, I would be happy to, to answer any questions about this property. If you have it, perhaps for the sake of ease, and I'll defer to Veronica and Rebecca on how you want to, would like to do this, but given that our second application is nearly identical other than the location and the type of building that it is, I thought perhaps it, it might be prudent to just go quickly through the exhibits on the other one. I will spare everyone my whole spiel about, about Thank this. You. Thank you for that thought, Oleg. Uh, I think your second pro property is not adjacent to this property. Is that No, correct? it's certainly not. No, no, no. Okay. So let's try this, Oleg. I think what we can do is I will ask the committee whether they have any questions. I'll then open up it up to the public, including your near neighbors. And then we'll go to your next property. And when we hear your next property, again, you've given us a very focused presentation. So thank you. And if you can continue with a focused presentation, I think that will be helpful on the second property. Wonderful. And again, I I know everyone's hungry, so I'm trying to get everyone to dinner as quickly as possible. 
Right, wonderful. And again, I propose this because the two properties are not adjacent. Sure. So what I'll do now is I, this is our process. I will go down the list of committee members in, a, in just a, a random order and call on them. After that, I will call on members of the public. So just looking at the list I happen to have here, Bob Lane, any questions? No questions, thank you. Charles Robin, any questions? No questions, thank you. Doug Miller, any questions? Is it possible, I don't know how this would be regulated, but to say that it should be two weeks or more as a proviso? Um, that I do only rent that out two weeks or more, but it's not a re that's my decision to do that. I've always done that, but sorry to butt in, Oleg. No, no, no problem. So, uh, Mr. Miller, if I may, there is certainly a, a way to restrict it. If you've ever rented an Airbnb, there, there's a, a means of restricting, you know, what kind of bookings you will accept as a host. Uh, to be perfectly frank with you, and because this is such a new issue within the city, I don't know yeah. how the city itself, like many other, you know, variance requests where, where perhaps there's some kind of dimensional thing. Um, they can actually put a proviso on the the variance, uh, and I, I just don't know is is the the truth of it. I think, um, you know, given given uh, Miss Wheeler's answer, I don't think we would have an, necessarily an issue with it because they don't want the turnover in any kind of frequency less than two weeks. But I, I just do not know if that is possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions, Doug Miller? No, thank you. Flora Becker, any questions? I have no questions. Rebecca Frisch, any questions? No questions. Steve Rubin, any questions? No questions, thank you. Andre Geffen, any questions? No questions, thank you. Rick Pasquier, any questions? No questions. Okay. Evan Litvin, any questions? No questions. Thank you. All right. Ben Zuckerman, any questions? Yes, I have two. We went through the photographs rather quickly. How many bedrooms are in there uh, and how many people can use it as an Airbnb maximum at any one time? Beth, you want to you wanna take this one since you restrict the, the bookings? Yes. Um, there, it's two bedroom. There is a bedroom downstairs and a bedroom upstairs, and it, it's limited to four people. Is that something that you would accept as some sort of a uh, proviso? I don't. I have other tenants in the building, and the idea would be, I don't. I want it to go perfect for everyone. So I don't understand it. Could that be a restriction for me, or going forward? It would I don't only know. apply to this unit, the Airbnb unit, or any unit in a building being used as an Airbnb, which you're saying would be just this one. Uh, have, how many people maximum have used it as an Airbnb at any one time? I know I've rented out to three, two parents and their daughter at four. Four is the limit. That's what I have on my listing. Okay. And it would be, the Airbnb <laughs> unit would be just this unit. Just this unit, yes. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Ben Zuckerman? No, thank you. And, and Mr. Zuckerman, if I could just follow up a little bit. I, I know I said it in the beginning, but just once again for context, this is one out of five units in this building. No, I understand that. Okay. Thank yes, you. <laughs> All right, um, thank you for that. Uh, I'd like now to open it up to the community. So again, what we're talking, the property that's under discussion, is uh, 1604 Spruce Street. If, you're, if you are one of the near neighbors or a member of the community and like, would like to ask a question, uh, can I, you please use the raise hand feature. And raise hand, the raise hand feature, you'll find that at the bottom of your screen under reactions. And um, Alig, uh, Mr. Sokolov, may I ask you to stop sharing your screen and then I Absolutely. think we'll see a little Absolutely. easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on, thank you, I'm going to call on people in the order that I see the raised hand feature. 
Um, and I'll ask if you could please state your name and address for the record. And so first I see Ariella Mansfield and apologies for any mispronunciations. Hi, uh, thanks so much. I think I, my name is Ariella Mansfield. Um, I live at 1725 Rodman. Um, and uh, thanks so much for the presentation. I think I actually heard, I heard about the zoning committee for the first time from the, a mailer that I think Oleg put in uh, my mailbox. Uh, and it's interesting just to hear what's going on. Um, I wanted to just understand a little bit more context about like, this is like a new rule uh, or something like how, how new is it? How many like, how many do we know anything about like how many places are affected by by this like I don't know anything about like how many Airbnbs do we have or short-term rentals do we have in our neighborhood uh do, do we know anything of like the bigger trends in our community about so thanks this for that. thanks for that Ariella I'm just going to jump in quickly and I'm going to say that in our uh CCRA zoning committee meetings we focus on the project at hand and we focus on zoning committee matters. So I'll turn it over to uh, Alieg, Mr. Sokolov, let him respond. Uh, but just for framing and for context, uh, we focus on the matter at hand, the property at hand. That's something that uh, just helps us along uh, and also on uh, the particular variance or refusal uh, under question. So I'll, I'll try to, to make it brief so I don't, you know, get into the macro picture of, of Airbnbs in Philadelphia. It's certainly the the Airbnb trend has been uh, ongoing for some years. Um, this new regulation, I think, was a, an attempt by the, the city and Department of License and Inspection to kind of rein in the amount or the way that people run their units with some oversight. Um, th these new regulations were passed over the summer, so everyone is kind of scrambling to to deal with them. I, I have no idea how many Airbnbs are in the neighborhood or in Philadelphia, but just from my own personal experience as an attorney and dealing with um, you know commercial real estate owners, landlords, developers, it has certainly been a a growing a growing trend. Right, thank you. And I just wanted now to call on our council for CCRA Zoning Committee, Wade Albert. Did you have anything that you feel would be helpful to add here? Uh, nothing to add, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question, Ariella. Do we have any other questions from the community regarding 1604 Spruce? So at this point, if there is anybody who is on a phone line or can't really operate the uh, raise hand feature well. I invite you to unmute yourself if you're a community member and to speak and ask your question. Okay, so hearing none, I'm gonna thank everybody for their discussion of that. And uh, I'm going to Aleg, thank you for that presentation. Thank you. And now what we'll do is we'll go to 1721 Lombard Street. Um, and Aleg, I believe you're also representing the owners here. So this is 17, 1721 Lombard Street. Um, this is an application, very similar to the previous case we heard, an application, a use as visitor accommodations. And the reason for the refusal is that the is visitor accommodations use is prohibited in this residential district. So Aleg, I'll turn it over to you again and uh, for your presentation. So if you'd like to run through this particular property, that would be wonderful. Okay, great. Is everyone able to see my screen once again? We are, thank you. Okay, wonderful. So just, just for the record, I'll state I'm Oleg Sokolov on behalf of, oh, pardon me, this would move. On behalf of 1721 Lombard LLC, which is the, the company, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulty, that, that is the uh, formal entity that owns 1721 Lombard Street. Um, once again, this entity is, is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler, who you heard from before. So similarly, this is once again a request to uh, allow for one unit in a two-unit building to be used as visitor accommodation. This, the only slight difference is this is actually an RM1 zoning designation of this building. It's it's certainly a, a little bit smaller. And the other difference I would say is uh, this is the third floor unit technically that would be 
used for, for this purpose or that we're requesting to use as this purpose. So once again, you'll see that it's the similar refusal for, for proposed use as visitor accommodation. Once again, here is our community notice letter that uh, I'm glad to hear was received by at least some of the uh, the neighbors. You know, oftentimes they, they come back to us at our office in, in droves because there was some issue with delivery. But um, once again, Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler, you know, went around to their neighbors who they have good relationship with and, and certainly asked for some support. So here's a, a neighbor from 1715 Lombard. And here's Southgate Restaurant, which you guys are likely aware of in the neighborhood. And then here's a, a, a neighbor support or, you know, su supporting the, the request from 1719 Lombard. And excuse me, this is 1721 Lombard, is that right? That's correct. That is the address. 1721 Lombard is the request. I think you said these neighbors are 1719. Yes, thanks. I, I realized that after he spoke. Thanks for that clarification, Ben. Yep. Is that a single family owner neighbor or is that a uh, apartment owner? So I will I will show you just um, this is this is the unit here. And these are all single family. Some of them, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I, ha I didn't look into whether any of them are uh, multi-family units such as this one. I, I believe this next door one is, but the remainder down the block, and they're a little disparate. There are a few that are multi-fam, two units or such, but the majority of this block is, is single family. So this is a three-story unit, and it would be this third window unit that would be used, or that we're requesting to be used as the Airbnb. And then, I apologize for running through the pictures quickly last time, so I'll do it this way. But this is the unit. And Beth, if you would just like to to chime in here and and let the the community know what kind of um, you know restrictions you place on on this booking and uh, you know what the maximum occupancy of this booking would be, I I think that would be very helpful. And I think I, I will wrap it up from there. Okay, um, a lot of my a lot of my uh, bookings are, are for one person. The, the other, it's for this four. This one is three. It's uh, I, sometimes I get parents and they're looking for a college or something, but they're, you know, young student. So they might ask for the daughter or the son to be in. So um, typically it's two. Sometimes there might be three for a situation like that. And this is a one bedroom, correct? It's one bedroom, yes. Okay. And then how about, uh, do you have any kind of like length restrictions on this one that you, that you place? This, this I do have a one week minimum. And I tend to get 10 days, two weeks, sometimes a month or two months. Okay. And once again, this is, a, this is something that you oversee yourself. It's not any kind of management company or anything. Yes. Yes, I oversee it myself. And All I right. do get Iris. I'm able to look at everyone's profile. I can scrutinize whether or not I accept the guest. I typically do. I get I'm mostly professionals. I get M. Night Shyamalan's editor was up there right before the pandemic. They had to leave because of what was happening. And during the pandemic, I did get a couple medical people that needed to be, you know, either their child needed to go to CHOP or something like that, and they needed a place to stay. But it's tip, I, no parties, no anything like that. It's, it's, it's not my goal to, to interfere with any of the neighbors or, you know, that, that, that wouldn't be anything that we want to do. We, I love hosting. I love meeting a lot of really neat people. And, uh, yeah, so. We live there, sure. Yes, and we, our family uses downstairs. And your family just, uses the downstairs unit here? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, we live in Bucks County. We live in Bucks County, but we do. I have a sister that lives in the city, and, and Stephen and I, our son, our daughter, when she needs to be in the city, we use the downstairs apartment for ourselves. So you keep that one pretty much, pretty much empty unless you're using it for family. Exactly. Understood. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I, I, I'm hesitant to stop sharing screen in case anyone has a specific question. So. Wonderful. Uh, that I'll, sounds just fine. Uh, sure. What I'll do now is I'll, uh, so thank you for that. And thank you for that clear presentation. I'd like to now to open it up to the members of the zoning committee. Since this use is so similar to the previous use that we heard, I'd like to just open it up and ask if there are any zoning committee members who have a question uh, about the property. Uh, Bob Lane, I see your hand. Well, um, Charles actually raised his hand ahead of me, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Defer, there, but, people are but, using are raising their hands manually, and I but, don't yeah, see that. But, what would share screen? Clear the screen. Can you clear the but, screen? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That would be terrific. But, I, so. I don't know. Then let's go in the order. Thank you. Let's be gentlemanly or ladylike. What, what's the appropriate word? Collegial. Let's go in the order. Let's go Charles Robin and then Bob Lane and then um, Ben Zuckerman. So Charles. Good question. I just see on the uh, zoning use registration permit. Is this two units or three units in this property? This is a two unit property. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Bob Lane. So I actually have a few questions <clears throat> and they pertain to both this and the other one. So Beth um, and your, your colleagues, <clears throat> I'm very impressed by how beautiful both this small unit and the other one were. So why, why are you promoting these as short-term visitor rentals as opposed to uh, selling them for long-term owners or tenants? And then I have a follow-up question after that. Well, when I first started to do the Airbnb, I don't know, what, I guess I believe my daughter was downstairs and I thought, let's do it. She's an artist. She's a painter. She can, uh, it'll be neat for her to have an income. Her and I can do it together. And when it's not being used, you know, my husband and I could be up there and we could spend a night in the city, see a show and use it ourselves. And it just kind of went from there. And uh, like I said, I, I I love hosting. It's just my personality. I love meeting people and getting to know them a little bit, even if it's not in person all the time. And uh, yeah, I just like being a host. And I it just, uh, it's, uh, I like to give a quality product for, you know, that's a very, happy. Thank you. And that's a very honest and I think very understandable explanation. Um, <clears throat> of course, once a variance or approval is given, it's not just for you personally, because it sounds like your personal situation, variances run with the land. And of course the next owner, or if these were all sold to some conglomerate that would have acquired a lot of Airbnbs, they may not operate it the same way that you do. Um, so my concern is, which maybe you could address or your lawyer could address is, you know, how if uh, the next operator is not as, uh, responsible as you are, uh, preventing parties, preventing short-term rentals, all that kind of thing. Um, you know, how, how would you address that? So if I, if I may answer it a little bit and, you know, in, in having discussions with, with Steve and Beth, you know, we were discussing whether given this new regulation, it, it perhaps warrants trying to apply for a variance for the entirety of the building, especially this one. And, you know, Beth and Steve both did not want to create this Airbnb building. Um, and, and part of the reason was because they thought that it would not be as desirable to one of these operators of an Airbnb. They, they've, you know, perhaps down the line somewhere have intentions of selling, but from my understanding, and they can, they can echo this, but no immediate intentions on selling the property. And from my personal kind of belief i don't think uh any of these airbnb operators is going to want to operate like a bifurcated situation you know so i i do understand your concern certainly bob and i i don't know that i definitively have an answer to to what can be done to prevent that in the future we would certainly be open to to hearing provisos it it's not 
the the fact that this is going to be an Airbnb that or maybe an Airbnb that would kind of generates any kind of higher sale price on the unit eventually or anything like that. This is just something that they've been the wheelers have been doing for a while with it and and want to continue to do so and and not change the the way they have operated these buildings and giving themselves the ability to to use the property in the city when it's not being used by Airbnb that's you know not something obviously that can be done if it's if it's a annual rent or anything like that thank you thank you any further questions uh bob lane no. Uh, that was just me. That was just me, Veronica. Thank you. I'm <laughs> done. All right. Uh, ben Zuckerman. Um, yeah, similar questions. Uh, there's nothing in this application that says this will only be one unit uh, for use as an Airbnb uh, or that it will be the first floor unit or that there will be any minimum stay length required or maximum number of people using it at any one time. Uh, assuming that we feel that provisos regarding those conditions are appropriate. Uh, are you amenable to them? That it would be limited to the first floor unit, there'd be a minimum stay, I think you said of one week, uh, and that there'd be no more than X number of people in there. Um, so uh, if I may just answer the first one, Mr. Zuckerman, and then I'll turn it over to, to Beth to answer you know, their, their willingness to to have provisos regarding the amount of people. Uh, it it just seemed to not generate the refusal regarding one unit. Um, I, I'm, I'd be happy to, to show or provide the community with the specific appeal application and the request in Eclipse, if anyone wants to take a look, that very explicitly stated that this was to be for both, in both buildings, solely for one unit. So, you know, if if additional provisos would be recommended by the CCRA to that effect, we certainly have no issue for with that because that is the request that we put in. Um, I think perhaps given how new these regulations are, Elle and I just didn't have the capability of of issuing a a use refusal for you know tied to one particular unit in the building. It's kind of a, a unique situation generally. You know, you don't change the use of one unit in a building. Thank you for that. And then uh, I'll leave it to Beth to answer, you know, uh, and you guys to answer regarding how, how you would feel about. And and Beth, perhaps, and Steve, perhaps I, I haven't explained this to you before, but I'm, I'm sure you've gathered that these provisos that the members of the CCRA are speaking about would basically be restrictions um, on these various uses of the building and it would be kind of uh, um, the contingency upon which the the ZBA would theoretically grant these these use variances. So I think what Mr. Zuckerman is asking is, you know, would, would you be amenable to having set restrictions on the length of time, not just within your Airbnb profile, but also as part of your zoning license, both to the length of time and the amount of people in each unit. And just one unit, just this one unit. And, and, cer I, and certainly the one unit. I, I, I thought I, I had hoped I addressed that in my okay. answer. Okay. Now, we're talking about Spruce Street, correct? No, we're on, um, on both. Lombard. I'm sorry? Lombard. We're, we're, yeah, the, the question was basically, and, and again, Mr. Zuckerman, if I get this incorrect, please, but would we be amenable to a, a set restriction of, on on Spruce, it be two weeks and no more than four guests, and on Lombard for it to be uh, one week ma minimum stay and no more than three guests? Sure, that's no problem. Sure, that'd be okay. great. And then the one unit. And again, just the, the one unit, which uh, I, I... Okay. Because yeah. our family would always use... This is Steve Wilder. He's talking about the one no, 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 no. He's talking about Lombard. Oh, okay. okay. And just answering the question. Okay. We would do, oh, it's just one unit, because our family's going to use the other. Yes. Right. Well, just, just keeping in mind that the future owners may have different ideas without this kind of proviso. Sure. Okay, that would protect you from the future of somebody doing both. Correct? Is that 
I, I would in jest say that that's the future owner's problem. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, thank you, Mr. Zuckerman. Yes. Other committee members, does any, do any other committee members have questions about this property, which again is 1721 Lombard Street? Committee, we'll go through the committee members first. Okay. Hearing well, none. I, I, I just have one question of Mrs. Please. Wheeler. Uh, where do you get your, your tenants? Uh, do you uh, uh, advertise? Or is it through a central agency that places the people with you? It's just Airbnb. I just, Airbnb. I don't. So thank I you. So, mm -hmm. Okay. That's an online service, right? So it's an online company that you use. I understand. Great. Thank you. All right, with given no other uh, uh, zoning committee member questions, I'd like to open it to the community. Are there any community members who would like to ask a question about this particular property? And again, the property we're talking about is 1721 Lombard Street. If you're a community member and if you would like to ask a question about this property, please use the raise hand feature so that I can call on you. Okay, I don't see any raised hands. So in case there's anybody, any member of the community that whose raised hands feature is not operating, functioning for them, if you're a community member and you'd like to ask a question about 1721 Lombard, I invite you to unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, I see none. So thank you for that. Uh, so uh, Mr. Sokolov and Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler, thank you so much for your presentations uh, on 1721 Lombard. Um, uh, we've closed those cases. You were very clear and succinct. And so thank you for that. I'd like to now move on to our third of four cases. And our third case is 504 to 510 South 21st Street. This is Matt, quickly say thank you to everyone for, for uh, having us before you today. I, I will log off um, and, of and you know, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving if we don't see you. And we do, we do hope that you, you don't find any opposition to our request. Thank you, everyone, again. Thank you. And happy holidays to all of you who are associated with the first two properties and log off now. Thank you. Take care. Thank now, you. Thank well, you. Now I'd like to turn to our third property, 504 to 510 South 21st Street. The it is an application for lot adjustment to create two lots, parcels A and B, from one existing OPA account for continued use as single family dwelling at parcel A and for five non-accessory surface parking spaces at parcel B. And the size and location are, are as shown in plan. And the reason for the refusal is uh, under landscape and screening, minimum of 10%, of that's 114 square feet, of the interior surface parking lot in all districts and off-street loading areas in all districts except 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1P, calculated as the total of area in all surface parking spaces and, and sur drive aisles shall be planted with landscape. OSF is proposed. And under uses, Non-accessory parking is prohibited in RSA 5 district. Five non-accessory spaces are proposed. So now I'd like to turn it over to the representatives and I think Catherine Missinet, and I apologize for any mispronunciations. Uh, I believe, are you here to present Catherine yes. Missimer? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Catherine Missimer. I'm the zoning attorney on the project. Uh, with me tonight are the property owner, Ms. Ellen Danish, and our project en engineer, Ms. Natalie Dwar. If you ladies could just wave so everyone can see you, I know you're both on. Um, they'll both be available should there be specific questions. Um, but Ms. Danish lives in the home at the corner of 21st and Tyrant Tryon Streets. Um, when she and her husband bought the property back in 1999, 
They purchased both the home at the corner of 21st and Tryon, as well as the adjacent lot, um, which was used then as a surface parking lot. Um, it wasn't until recently that Ms. Ms. Danish learned that the lot did not have the proper zoning approvals in place. That was, you know, when she was going through organizing her affairs um, with her advisors, it was brought to her attention. Um, it's likely that this use probably even predates zoning, but we'll provide a little bit more detail there. Um, it's been used as a surface parking lot for many, many years. As a result, we're here today with an application as, as our good chair summarized for you to legalize the existing parking lot. And in connection with that, we'd like to relocate the lot lines. And if I may, I will just share my screen. It may be easier if everyone can see the plan while we're doing this brief please overview. Feel, please feel free to share your screen and show us all of your images, including plans so we can understand. Great. Are you seeing that now? We are, thank you. Excellent, thank you. As I mentioned, this is the existing condition, the view to the north, to the top here of the page. This is the home shown in this orangish yellowish color. And as you can see, the parking lot really covers two lots. Um, Ms. Danish was also unaware of this at the time, that the parking lot was bisected essentially by a lot line, even though historically it's always been treated as one lot, been used as one lot, you can see the parking spaces marked here have always been in this configuration at this location, um, or at least since Ms. Danish purchased the property. So the proposal would be to essentially remove that lot line that's dividing the two. And as the chair mentioned in her overview, the OPA has always considered the three parcels one OPA account. So even though they're separate lots for property purposes, they're one tax lot. So one one taxpayer ID has been assigned to these three lots. Um, and I thought it may be helpful to sort of orient everyone with some photos. Please do. It's a little bigger. The plan is obviously a bit bigger than our photos, but we'll put that center. So this is sort of an aerial view. You can see this is the home here, and this is the parking area here, and this is Naudane Street. So this is 21st, Naudane, and Tryon is on the other side of the home here. And this is what the parking lot looks like today. Ms. Danish's res residence is here and the parking spaces are here accessible via Nadine. Another view of the parking area. And some pot planner planners here with potted plants, um, to sort of add some green space. And this is a historic photo. Um, you'll recognize the same home. This is from the early 60s. You can see the parking area is here. The spaces were turned at that time, but the access was still Naudane. Um, it is our understanding that this was historically the non-accessory lot to the Reinhardt Carpet Company. Um, they were located on 20th and Naudane, about a block away, and they had this lot for their car carpet customers to use. Um, so a little bit of background. As the chair mentioned, this application does generate two refusals. The first obviously being um, the, the parking use, which in a single family district, such as these lots, designated RSA five, the sole permissible use is really a, a single family home. Um, so the parking that's been here for many, many years is not permissible by right. And that's the reason that Ms. Danish has elected to take these steps to legalize what, what use has been on site. And as the chair also mentioned, a minimum of 10% interior landscaping is required when you do have surface parking areas. Now it's important to note the distinction here. Obviously that code restriction is intended to break up large, you know, expansive parking areas where you have a large portion of paved, paved property. That's not necessarily the case here where we're talking about, you know, a small five space lot that's in a neighborhood. Obviously there's planters, it's well decorated, but again, they don't have the room at this location to really accommodate both parking and um, the landscaping that's really in the code designed to break up large expansive paving and not necessarily these small neighborhood type lots. Um, I will conclude my brief overview, obviously, with this petition of support. Ms. Danish did approach many of her neighbors and explain the situation. And as you can see, she gained 
an overwhelming amount of signatures, um, I believe in the mid thirties total um, supporting her request. So with that, I, I agree with the prior council. I'd like to give you your time, obviously to ask questions, but I don't wanna over belager. What I think is a relatively simple request. Um, if there are specific questions, obviously my team is here and happy to answer them. But again, want to keep it as succinct as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Missimer. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. That was very succinct, very yes. clear. And I think it was a, a very clear and very helpful overview. So thank you for that. Um, I'd like to now just go down the list of our committee members in no particular order um, and just ask if anyone has any questions. Charles Robin, may I start with you? Any questions? Uh, just two questions. The best of your knowledge, how long has the parking lot been a parking lot? The earliest photo we were able to locate is, again, the photo you saw from the early 60s. Um, but I believe it does obviously predate that the date of that photo. Um, Ms. Danish, do you have any no, recollection that's, that's, or has that's, anyone that's, mentioned that's fine. Okay. I, 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 that's fine. And my second question is, I guess a technical one, I guess I should know this. But if we did allow the parking... What would the new zoning be? Or the, it would it still be RSA 5? The RSA 5 would not change. The permitted use at this location would be non-accessory parking for five spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Um, going down my list, uh, Doug Miller, any questions? Well, I'm, I'm not sure this is pertinent, but I saw on the plan that they had spaces for six, and you're saying five. I assume it's five. It's five. If you'll see, um, given current code requirements, they're required to have a accessible space in any parking lot that has one to five spaces. So in order to accommodate that space, we're proposing five spaces. Yes. Great. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Uh, Flora Becker, any questions? Flora, no, you'll... No questions. Thank you. Rebecca Frisch, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Steve Rubin, any questions? No questions, thanks. Thank you. Andre Geffen, any questions? Yeah, was this lot originally cleared as a result of freeway construction efforts on South Street? That I don't know. That could be um, a reason for it. Uh, as far as I know, the earliest use we've been able to track down is, again, as the Reinhardt carpet company's lot. Um, I don't know what, you know, caused it to be vacant at that time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, next, uh, Rick Pasquier, any questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Evan Litvin, any questions? Uh, no questions, thank you. Thank you. Ben yeah. Zuckerman? Oh. Of course I have questions. All right then. Uh, who parks there now? Are they paying you rent for the spaces? Is it is it an occupied commercial type lot or what's its use? When Miss Danish and her husband purchased the home and the lot together back in the late 90s, um, there were tenants utilizing the spaces. They were renting the spaces. Um, two of those tenants remain today. So she's had those tenants for many years at this point. Um, Wait, for when her you say entire tenants, tenure. tenants who live elsewhere, but they park their cars here. I think they may be neighbors. Um, okay, but they're not living Ellen, did you want to ident identify how close or in what proximity your tenant parkers are? That's that's really not relevant. They're, they're not people who live in the residential premises abutting the parking lot, is that correct? Well, Miss Danish does utilize at least one of the spaces for herself. I believe she's reserved two that she does not rent out to anyone else. Yes, um, I have two spaces for myself. I rent out for two of the, uh, every, the four people all live within one block. One couple lives right across the street from the lot. They pay me monthly rent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, ben Zuckerman, any other questions? That's all, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Bob Lane, any questions? Yep, I, I have one quick, quick technical question. Um, sure. If I understand the presentation, is this a non-conforming use? Um, are you maintaining that this has been the way it was long before zoning, going back to, I think you said the 60s or, or whatever? So we can't, 
we can't establish exactly when the use began. Um, so that's why we are going through this process. It's likely that it predates zoning. Um, obviously, based on the photo, it was used as parking at that time, but we'd we'd like to take it through the zoning process and get the proper zoning approvals. Well, so. I, my understanding is you have to go through the zoning process to establish the non-conforming use, but are you maintaining that it's been that way since before the zoning pro pro yes. prohibited? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yes. That's thank it, thank you. you. Okay, we've now uh, run through all of the zoning committee members for questions, and I'd like, like to now open it up to the community for questions. So again, for this property, as we've done for the previous two, if you are a community member and, or a near neighbor and you have a question, I ask that you raise your hand and please use the raise hand features and you can find the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen under reactions. And what I will do is I will call on community members as I see your hands raised. So if you're a community member and you'd like to uh, ask a question or uh, make a comment, please raise, please use the raise hand feature. Can we clear the screen from the Absolutely. proposal? Thank you. Okay, I don't see any raised hands. So now in case there's any community member who, uh, for whom the raised hand function isn't uh, working well at this time, I invite you to unmute and ask your question or make your comment and again, uh, this is for 504 to 510 South 21st Street. Okay, I don't see, uh, Terry Clark, please. And I'm going to ask you to please uh, raise, your, uh, raise your hand as you have. Please introduce yourself and state your name for the committee. And your address, please. You're muted. So Terry, if you can unmute yourself, uh, you will be it'll, you'll be able to ask your hand. Terry, I don't think you're muted, but we're still not hearing you. Your microphone may not work. That's right, Terry. I'm sorry, we're not hearing you. Another option is, can you type your question into the chat? Looks like she's moved. Um, right. So let's let's Terry. Can you turn up your microphone or possibly type your question into the chat and I'll read it out loud for you. I'm so sorry, Terry, I'm not hearing you. Okay, so thank you. So Terry has dropped something in the chat and she said, I, she, Terry Clark says she lives at 2117 Tryon Street and she wants to give Ellen support. Thank you, Terry, thank you for that. Thank you. I want to back up for one moment. I have accidentally overlooked one of our com committee members, Robin Sweet. Robin, I am so sorry. I think it's because R is here somewhere at the bottom and I didn't notice it when I was calling on committee members. I want to make a special place for you. Robin, do you have any questions? Uh, uh, no, no, no question, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. So I'd I like to make a comment if I might. Uh, please um, do. May I ask my you to introduce Lorraine yourself? Bradley. Mm -hmm. Yes, my name is Lorraine Bradley. And I just would like to say, Ellen often uses that spot to gather the community, um, you know, in um, the, the two or three blocks around. She has at least twice a year uh, a get together. So it really fosters, that spot really fosters a togetherness of the community. Thank you. And so it sounds like you're in support of this. Is that correct? Oh, yes, very much so, yes. Thank you. And Ms. Bradley, for the record, may I ask you to give your address? We ask that of all community members who yes. speak. It's 415 South Van Pelt Street. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who would like to speak regarding this property? Yes, good evening. I'd like to say something as well. Um, Please my, do. Name, mm -hmm. my name is Paulina Sezak and I live on 2106 Tryon Street. I'm a direct neighbor of Ellen Danish mm -hmm. and I am in complete support of this proposal as well and I like Randy had mentioned Ellen does use the space for the good of the community 
as an open air space. We have black parties there with kids running around. Um, and um, also, as it was mentioned, the first picture was from 1964. So this proposal is really not to change anything that has been in place for the past, if I'm doing my math right, 60 years. And I'm in support, thank you. Thank you, Paulina. Paulina, Paulina, we've registered your support. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Hi, um, this is Gail Gizmondi, 2106 Naudane Street. We live right across the street from the lot. And we'd also like to say that we are in support of this. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak uh, regarding this property? 504 to 510 South 21st Street. My name is Catherine Nino. I live at 2119 Tryon Street, and I would like to give my support to Ellen as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is, is there anyone else who would like to speak regarding this property? Yes, this is Samuel Elias and Jill Elias from 2113 Naudane Street. We'd also like to provide our support. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak regarding this property? Is there anyone else who would like to speak regarding the property? All right, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank um, uh, council uh, and I, uh, Miss Miss Simmer, for a very clear and thorough presentation. Um, I, and I'd like to thank uh, um, the owner uh, for uh, attending. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not finding your name right in front of me, as well as Ms. all. Ms. Danish, <laughs> thank you, as well as all community members who have att attended and talked about this particular property. Thank now, you all for your time. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you. And thank you for your time and best wishes for your having a good holiday as well. We're now going to go to our fourth property for this uh, for today. And this is our fourth and final property of this uh, zoning committee meeting. And this is for 1528 Now Dane Street. This is an application for a visitor accommodations at first floor in the same building with single family household living above in an existing structure. And the reason for the refusal is the proposed visitor accommodations is prohibited in this zoning district. And I believe the presenting individuals are Allison Dubovsky and Stefano Bernardini. And I apologize for any mispronunciations. So Allison and Stefano or Ms. Um, Dubovsky and Mr. Uh, Bernardini, I invite you to uh, present and um, present your property to us. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, you know, I'm Allison and this is I'm Stefano. Stefano. Um, we are residents at 1528 Nodane Street. Um, we do uh, live in the unit upstairs and we are, we have been renting out the bottom unit as an Airbnb. Very similar to the first, um, to the first, you know, case that we heard this evening. Um, Airbnb has come up with a lot of changes and for this reason, we are presenting to you and looking to go to the zoning board to, to um, secure the accommodate, visitor accommodations. We want to share, uh, if, if possible, we are going to share our screen, so... Please uh, do, please do. So, um, this is 1528 Naldine Street. Uh, we are uh, the owners, as my wife said, and uh, this is the scope of our request. Uh, so, uh, so far, uh, uh, we have been renting and uh, we are living in the apartment upstairs. Uh, and uh, we would like to rent the one, uh, the one downstairs. Uh, we wanted to give you even an aerial view of uh, the place where we are located between 15 and 16 and below Lombard uh, and above uh, South Street. This is our property. This is a, um, another view of that one. We are right above the South Street. And uh, uh, the street view. this is the street view. This is our uh, uh, our property. We would share the entrance with uh, uh, with the potential guests. Uh, this is uh, our main entrance, uh, as we say. Then, then this is an overview of uh, the apartment uh, um, to rent. It's a two bedroom apartment, one bathroom, and a and a and a small deck outside. And uh, 
this, this is a view of uh, the entrance. Uh, this is uh, like a shared entrance, uh, the, the door uh, in front of you. This one is uh, our, uh, our apartment and the other one uh, that is this one is uh, the potential rental unit. And this is everything like uh, just uh, to give you an overview of, uh, of the property we are talking about. So currently we have been using it um, as an Airbnb. Uh, the nice thing about it, very similar to the the first, you know, um, the, the first case that we heard tonight, is that um, the nice part is, is that we're able to rent it for these shorter term rentals, but then also use it for friends and family that are coming from out of town to then stay with us and spend time um, with us as well. So um, even though we are, we do have a rental license, we can rent it out, you know, for a year rental, for 30 plus days rental, um, we would like the opportunity to keep being able to rent for 29 days or less. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have any other points that you would like to make for the committee before we open up to committee and then later community questions? I think the main point that we would like mm -hmm. to make is that we do live upstairs and we do take mm -hmm. care of it. We um, are the point of contact for any guests that are staying there. We clean it, we do everything for it. We're, you know, very strict, no parties. Um, also, you know, no garbage or anything like that being left out on the street. Absolutely, you know, we, we have an eye on it at all times. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for that concise and clear presentation. I'd like to now move to zoning committee member questions and Robin Sweet, I'd like to begin with you, please. Any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bob Zuckerman, any questions? Uh, I've just made your name up. Ben Zuckerman, any questions? Uh, well, I will say that I didn't realize there were so many nice Airbnbs in, in the area. These are all lovely properties. Um, I guess the only question I would have is um, uh, never mind. I have no questions. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank no you, questions. Uh, Bob Lane, any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Charles Robin, any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. I'm wondering if we might, uh, if I can just ask our presenters to just hold the screen steady and, and with, uh, yes. if we might just pause on a photo, thank you. I think that can help people focus on, 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 on the ideas at hand. Uh, Doug Miller, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Flora Becker, any questions? You're muted, Flora. Flora. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca Frisch, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Steve Rubin, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Andre Geffen, any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Riz Pasquier, any questions? <laughs> Oh, we're hearing a very funny squeaking. Rick? Possibly. No, no questions. Thank you. Evan Litvin, any questions? No questions. Thank you. And with that, we have uh, reached all of our committee members that I am aware of. If I have missed a committee member, I'm embarrassed and apologized, and please alert me to that. I now want to turn to community questions. So if you are a member of the community or a near neighbor, and again, the property under discussion is 1528 uh, Nodane Street. I invite you to raise your hand and we will, uh, I will call on you in the order that I see hands raised and I'll call on you and I'll ask you to state your name and your address and then give your question or uh, we also accept short comments such as comments of support or um, uh, lack of disapproval, um, opposition. And we need the screen cleared. If, you, if I can ask you to stop sharing screen, we'll be able to see all of the uh, participants more easily. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Taib Smith, and apologies for any mispronunciations. May I call on you and ask you to introduce yourself and give us your uh, address, please? Uh, yes, great pronunciation. Taib Smith, I live at 1509 Naudane Street. Um, I have a question and I, I guess a comment. One, how long have you owned the property? So we purchased the property in February of 2019. Okay. And do you see, you know, just as a neighbor, do you see yourself 
selling within the next decade? No. So one of the things is, is that we are very happy to stay here and we would like to continue doing so. Um, if we do have to rent it out as a long-term rental, potentially at that point, we would then at that point potentially have to move. We'd rent out both of the units as long-term units at that point. We wouldn't sell it, but we'd do that just because, as we mentioned, we have family coming from abroad and whatnot, and it's we like to host them. So potentially down the line, if that was no longer an option for us, then we would see ourselves moving. But we we love the neighborhood and we would love to stay here if possible. Okay, so um, thank you for that. And I guess now is time for, for my comment and observation. Had I not seen the earlier proposal, I probably would be more in support, but I am actually concerned that there are so many Airbnbs, actually Airbnbs by people who live in the suburbs, frankly, and they were like, we're losing the civic infrastructure of Center City because there is so much transient uh, perspectives on how to monetize properties, All right? So I'm not gonna oppose your project, but I am deeply concerned about, um, you know, I've, I've lived in Center City most of my life. I'm a third generation Philadelphian. And I just from listening to this conversation, I can see why, you know, my nephew has a really hard time finding a desirable apartment in Center City because there's no incentive to make affordable apartments for, for young people who are going to school or making Philadelphia a home. Um, so I'm not in opposition to your to your Airbnb, but I know there's another Airbnb on the street that I don't believe the people live nor um, turn over the property. So I'm deeply concerned of, about this, but I will not oppose your, your project because you're um, resident owners. Hey, thank you for that position and thank you for that. Um, may I ask if there are any other uh, questions or Again, comments such as support or oppose from uh, community members or neighbors. And I, if you're a community member or a neighbor, I invite you to raise your hand. Okay, seeing no hands, if you're a community member or a neighbor and the raise hand function feature isn't working for you, I invite you to unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, I see none. With that, uh, I'd like to thank um, uh, our two owners, uh, Alison Dubofsky and Stefano Bernardini for a concise and clear presentation. Thank you. Thank you to all our community members who, our community member for this case, who has uh, asked a question. Um, at this point in time, we're going to close the public sec session. And just one moment, I've seen something in the chat. Ariella Mansfield has noted in the chat, before you end the meeting, can you explain again how the committee publishes their decisions and the options they may choose? Ariella, I'll be happy to. And thank you for that clarifying question. And I will ask you to give me just one moment so that I know that I uh, read, uh, give you the exact uh, language that you will need. So we, uh, the committee, votes in one of three ways, and that is oppose, not oppose, or not oppose with provisos. The CCRA never votes in favor of an application. And our decision is emailed to the council person, that's the elected representative, the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Adjustments, and the applicant, and it is posted on the CCRA website. And again, importantly, no matter how we decide, if you are concerned with a project, we strongly recommend that you attend the ZBA hearing. This is the best way to make your concerns known. The CCRA zoning committee cannot express the neighbor's point of view. Only a property owner or a grieved individual may express their personal concerns at the ZBA. Okay. Do we have any other questions from the public? That's it. All right, well, thank you very much. I want to thank all of you for attending and thank our presenters for such clear presentations. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and a happy, safe and safe holiday. At this point, uh, I invite everyone who is not a committee member to go ahead and feel free to leave the meeting. We are now moving into closed session. Thank you.
And what I will do is I will pause, I will end recording now. Okay. There's I'm somebody going. here identified as Zoom user. That's Isn't right. It? And I'm going to move them into the waiting room. I'm not sure who Zoom user is, but they're now in the waiting room. And I think the rest of us are all community members plus wait. So now I'm going to stop recording. We're legal to Zoom.